With Jedi Survivor just around the corner, the EA app magically has started working on Steam Deck without Lutrus. For those of you that are savvy on how to install applications, I'm not going to keep you the long way. If you just use Proton Experimental and you know how to install XEs as normal, you can now run the EA app launcher directly. For those of you that don't know, you can see that this is running a great download rate as well, much better than I'm getting on Lutris, and it's actually behaving itself much better than the Lutris version as well. So let's dive into how to get this installed on Steam Deck. First of all, you will need to switch over to desktop mode and open up your favorite browser. I'll continue to use Chrome as I've got a lot of stuff signed in here. Let's do a quick search for EA app download. I'll put a direct link in the description below. And there's also an article that you can follow along if you want some text-based instructions rather than following along with the video. Download the EA desktop app and store it somewhere easy to get to. I always go for downloads. Then go and find your downloads folder. For some reason, it doesn't always update immediately for me. I don't know if this is a bug in the Dolphin Explorer, but I need to refresh it a couple of times and then it pops up. Then you can right click this and say add to Steam. This will do a little loading animation and this should add it to your Steam library. However, this is another little bugbear for me. But when I go to my library after doing this, it doesn't appear. Fear not, if you restart Steam, it will pop up. You can also just go through the add a game, add a non Steam game method. If you don't want to worry about the restart, then right click on your EA app installer file and hit properties. Go to the compatibility option. Hit force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool. And select Proton Experimental. Now Proton 8 should now work as well, but GE wasn't working for me. So Proton Experimental is the safe bet and then hit play. This will start the installation process. Unfortunately, we can't customize the setup at the moment. The button just doesn't seem to do anything. So just hit let's go. This will run through the process. And then once it's finished, which I have skipped ahead a little bit here, as it does take a minute, it will pop up with the login. However, you don't want to log in at this stage. So just close this out and hit stop in Steam if it doesn't automatically go away. Now to save on a bit more fiddling, we're going to go back into the properties of the EA app installer, and we're going to change the target path. Now, once again, for some reason, this didn't work for me. Hopefully you'll be able to hit the browse button and you'll get the Dolphin Explorer dialog pop up. If not, as I did, go manually to your Dolphin Explorer, hit the home button. And if you don't see the hidden folders here, use the three lines up in the top right and select the show hidden files option. Once you see all these here, hit dot steam and then the steam link and then find the steam apps folder and then the compact data folder. Now, if you're lucky, you can sort this by created date and hopefully the top folder is the one that you want, either the very top or the very bottom. However, this has always proved highly unreliable for me. So instead, I just go straight to the search in this folder and search for EA space app. This should only return one or two results, but they should end you up in the same directory. So once you get your result of EA updata.link, just right click this and say open path in new tab. This should then take you to that directory. From here, you want to find program data in the top folder because you can't quite go far enough in the first instance and then drive C. You then want to go into the program files folder and then the electronic arts folder, EA desktop twice. And you'll now be in the directory where you'll be able to find the EA desktop.exe. Now, if you came through the browse method, you should just be able to click this and say, OK, and it will set the path and target for you. If you weren't, and just to confirm that this was the XE that was just installed, as you can see my date in the bottom right, and this matches, you can now right click this file and say copy location. Come back to your Steam shortcut page and paste this into the target between the quotes. And if you've accidentally wiped out the quotes, just make sure that there is quotation marks at the beginning and end of target.
And then in the start in, you can just paste this again in replacement to what was there. But this time, remove the EA desktop.exe on the end. Leave everything else as it is. And that's all you need to do. I have also renamed mine to EA app, or you can call it EA desktop. This makes it easier to identify and will help you in a step back in game mode in a very short while. Now I recommend running this the first time via desktop method. One to confirm that you've got everything set up correctly as it's easier to correct here, but also it's just easier to log in because if like me, you do have your Chrome browser logged in and linked to your EA account, I can now just use the Google method to sign into my EA account. If not, you can do this manually here and again, verify that everything launched correctly. Once you've verified that that's all working, you can go ahead and install games and applications from here if you want. I'm gonna switch over to game mode just to show you how that behaves. So switching back to game mode, the reason I renamed this as EA app is if you have Steam Grid DB Stecky Loader plugin installed, you can now just right click and say change artwork and it should auto load all the EA app or EA desktop artwork for you. So you can pick your capsule, wide capsule and hero images and just get them added to make it look nice in game mode. If you don't know about Decky Loader or the Steam Grid DB plugin, again, there's a link in the description and article below of how to get this installed. So running this in game mode, I just double check as always that compatibility is still set to Proton Experimental. You can see that it's not using the Lutris method there. And now you can see it running in game mode. Now navigating this can be a little bit tricky, mainly because the hover of the friends right tab is very sensitive and very close to the scroll bar that you need to get to a lot of the actions here. This isn't particularly controller friendly, so you will have to be very exact with either your finger or using the mouse shortcut to navigate around. But as you can see here, I have EA Play Pro and I can preload Jedi Survivor. If you're watching this past that point, then obviously you can just go and install the app here. Last point here, I can change the install directory quite happily. It will default to the C drive and it does recognize the internal space correctly here. If you don't have an E drive for your SD card, like I do here, then check out our auto mount script, which I'll also leave in the description below to make sure that in third party launches that your SD card or external storage is mapped to another drive. So I just created an EA games folder here. So you can see that I have plenty of space on my SD card and you don't need desktop shortcuts because I'm just gonna waste folder structure and space. And that's it, I can now download and reload my EA Play version of Jedi Survivor. Of course, we'll have footage of this once it's released. So check back on the channel and good luck with your EA apps in future.